Hey everybody, it's Bobby. Uh, today I am making a telescoping card. Just in case you don't know what that is, it is a card like this that has the dimension. Pardon my fingers, I was making another card and I have all kinds of ink on me. Anyway, if you look at the side, you can see the dimensions of it. And it just gradually stands out. This is made uh, with the In the Meadow stamp set and Lovely as a Tree. On the inside, I've just stamped some trees. I haven't put a sentiment yet. I don't know what I want it to be. Sometimes I make cards ahead like this, and I just save them and don't, don't add a sentiment. And then if an occasion comes up, you think, oh, this I like this card for whatever. Then you can add your sentiment then, and you got a card ready. So what you need for this card is going to be uh, lengthwise half a sheet of basic black. It's four and a quarter wide, the full 11 inches, and then we'll fold it in half at five and a half. Okay, I have stamped my images just to save time, and I'm going to sponge in the colors. And I have a little uh, one inch circle cut here to mask off the moon. And I'm going to start with soft sky. And it's a very faint blue, so I usually end up adding a little bit of something else to bring out some color. So I'm just going to lightly sponge this in, and it doesn't take much. I tend to have too heavy of a hand, so I have to be careful. So if it takes me a little longer than most people, it's because I'm trying not to make big blobs of color. So just hang on to your little mask there so that you leave your your little moon space or sun or whatever. I, I call it the moon. Dab that off and get some back behind the trees. Now this is one of those deals where you stamp what's in the front first. So I stamp the deer in the front and then I cut a mask and uh, I save that for the next time. I just put it in the stamp set. That way I won't have to cut it again if I ever want to use it, uh, do the same thing or do another card with that type of it where I need it to be in the front then I don't have to recut that mask. Okay. I think I will add just a little bit of marina mist just for a little extra color. You know, I could add a little of this blue sky to the inside piece too while I've got the sponge dauber out. Put a little marina mist on it, give it a little color. main one. I don't want it to be too dark, but I want it to have some, oops, caught it on the edge and got a little dark on the edge, but I guess it'll be okay. I want it to have, you know, enough streaks in it that it looks like clouds are moving across the sky. stop with that. If I play too much, I may get it too dark. Okay, let me lay these aside. I don't need them anymore. Now we can take the mask off. And I just want a tiny bit, just a hint of yellow, where that moon's going to be. I don't want it to be too dark. and I'm just going to make little bitty circly motions. I don't want to go out too far because I don't want to turn my sky gray or green. <laughs> Can't even think. Okay, so that's enough of that. Gives it just a little bit of a yellow hue. Let me 
put my mask for my son in here so I don't lose that. Okay, now for the deer, I prefer to do that with my Copics. I have E51, 53, and 55, and I'm not going to do a lot of shading or anything elaborate. I just, I haven't got to the point where I have the, where I feel the same control with the Stampin' Right markers yet, and I'll get there. As I've said before, it's me, I'm sure. Now, I would prefer to color on the Express It blending card, but that's not what I have here. So we'll just make the best of what we got. I just hope this doesn't smear with the ink or anything. Okay, now I'm going to add in a few little shadows here. And I'm just going to dab them in. Because we can come back and blend it out. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Just put a little shadow on his belly behind his leg. I'm going to blend that out a little bit with the 51 that I used in the beginning. And then I'll add a little bit darker color. and That'll be all I do with it. Because it's such a small image that you don't have to do a lot. And this is E55. basically putting shadows where I think you know the darkest part of the body is and a little bit on the head up there and then I'll go back to the lightest color again and blend that out That's good enough for that. It's so small that you don't need to get really real detailed with it. Okay, I didn't get out the old olive. We need the old olive for the ground. So let's just start sponging in the ground. into green on the trees. I don't want to rub it in because then I'll take a chance of muddying up my sky. So I'm just going to dab a hint of green in there. Oh, I need to leave the green out. I need the little sprig of leaves out of here, or green, uh, grass. Oh, I can't talk today. A little sprig of green. Goodness. That would be called grass. You guys ever get to where you can't talk straight? I'm telling you. And I don't want to stamp it real dark because it's farther away. So I'm going to leave that kind of light in the background. That ought 
for being good. Let me wipe this off till I get done and then I'll get out the stamp and scrub. Okay, now our next project is to cut these out. So what we're going to do is out of our new um, what are they called? Something squares. Layered squares, I think. Layering squares framelits. There's two sets of squares and then two sets of scallops. So I've taken the large one out of this set and I don't know what the measurements are of them. But I've taken the largest one out of this set, or the second largest out of this set, I think. Now that goes out of this set. Then I've taken the second and the fourth out of that set because I want there to be a space. The first one I did, I put four layers in it, and I'm only going to do three this time. So what you want to do, let me move this out of the way so make sure you can see. You want to decide where your focal point is and put your large die there. And then your next size, kind of lay it evenly, spaced as evenly as you can and then the third one. And make sure your cutting side is down on all of them. Oops, that's got a little sticky on it from the packing. Okay, now I need the... I don't know if I want to use that on top of the ink after I just did it or not. Let me get my... There's my post-it notes. I'll use those just to be safe. Okay, so I'm going to put this across this corner to hold it down. So I don't, don't want it to shift while it's going through the big shot. And then I'm going to put this one across here. And that should take care of it. Now let me take it over to the big shot and I'll be right back. It'll just take me a second to cut these out. through the big shot. <laughs> okay, so here's what we have. Take the post-it notes off and the dies. And I'll put these back where they belong. And this one goes here. And this one goes in here. I put these on magnet sheets when I get them. They come with a double-sided tape. But I like to put the magnet sheets inside the envelope they come in. And I keep them in there because the name and the product number is on there. So, what we're going to do is take our black cardstock. And we're going to fold it in half. I can't see if I got it straight. I think I do. And we need the, I don't know where my other bone folder is, but I'll use this one for the time being. And we'll score the top of it. Now this first layer is going to go on your card like this with snail. So let's put that down. It doesn't need anything behind it. Because the other layers are going to have, uh, before I used, um, dimensionals and it got really 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 thick and I don't know how that's going to work out in the mail if I ever wanted to mail it but I thought well I would try it this time with the fun foam oops make sure that's even I think that's make sure it's even on both sides that ought to be pretty good okay so now that's down. So then I had already cut pieces of fun foam. Let me put this on the inside. And I'm going to use Tombow on the 
with the fun foam, make sure it, this is the piece we put the trees on for the inside. Well, get it open. There we go. So that goes there. Now, I cut out the uh, foam for these. I'm going to just use fun foam and mount it on this way. But what I want to do is cut just a little bit off of two sides so that it doesn't have an overhang because I used the same thinlet so it's going to be an exact duplicate of the graphic and I don't want it to have any overhang. I want it to fit just inside like that. So let's do some Tombow. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Looks like I've got plenty. And this will go inside that square. Oops. Wiggled on me a little bit, but that's okay. And then we'll put some Tombow on here. this right like so. Make sure your trees match up. And then we need the next piece. Oh, let me trim just like I did the other one. almost forgot. Put a little Tombow on that. We only need one piece. If you're using dimensionals, then you'd have to use two pieces for the center because you wouldn't have complete coverage underneath like we do with the foam. So this is your second piece. I'm making fingernail marks in it. And then a little Tombow on there. I hope I'm still in frame, am I? Yeah, I guess I'm okay. I get carried away doing this and I forget. And I try to stay in frame, but I'm not always right on the money with it. I see a little blue seeping out there. I'm going to wipe that off. Okay, and then we've got one more layer. And I'll take a little dab off of that. And we'll put this one in the center. In here. Oops. Darn. Stuck to my finger. Okay, now the last center part with the deer. And we're going to put that right here. So everything matches up. I like it better with the fun foam under it. And there's your finished card. And you can still see under it, but it's not... Under here you can see all the empty spaces where the dimensionals are. And here you have a solid background, so you don't see all those air pockets under there. So I like it this way better. And you can always make four levels like I did on here if you want to. But uh, it's just a matter of what you want to do. But I thought they both turned out pretty cute. I really like this technique. It's needed something different. So if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and then I'll let you know for sure. Um, once you're subscribed, you'll know each time I put out a new video. Okay, thanks a lot for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Have a good day. Bye, everybody.